A seven kilometer stretch of brilliant white silica sand that is among the purest in the world. This beach literally shines. I'm on Whitsunday Island, which is one of 74 islands in the Whitsundays, and this is Whitehaven Beach. Now, I love coming to the beach, but I also love cooking on the beach, a little barbecue. So I'm gonna cook for you these delicious mango cheeks, char grilled on the barbecue with some honey and chili. And I'm gonna show you how to make labneh. Now labneh is pretty much Greek style yogurt that's been strained. Now you'll need some muslin cloth and you can get this from fabric stores or homeware stores. And if you can't find this, you can use a chucks. That'll work a treat too. Now we're gonna place this into a fine sieve and then just tuck it underneath. Then I'll place the yogurt into the cloth. And essentially, we want to take as much of the liquid out of this as possible so we get a really delicious, thick, cheese-like consistency. Now we bring in the sides of the muslin cloth and just gather it into a ball. Give it a twist. So at the moment, it's really, really soft. And then if you have just an elastic band, twist and then tie it up. And now what we want to do is just leave this to suspend in this sieve, just over this bowl, and all of this liquid will come out. Now, don't press it too hard because we don't want to force the yogurt out of it. We just want to get all the liquid. So I'll put that to the side, and then we can get on with our barbecued mango. I love serving mango like this. If you can't find mango, you can use many different tropical fruits. Papaya works really nicely, even persimmons. So I'm just going to cut the cheeks off each side. Oh, look at that. The smell of summer, they look fantastic. I'm leaving them in their skins with a little bit of honey. Just drizzle it over the top. It's going to give it some extra sweetness. It's also going to caramelise on the barbecue so it's going to become even more molasses-like. Now, this is a very interesting twist. I'm adding a little bit of chilli powder. What I want is that combination of sweetness from the honey and the warmth of the chilli. And you do that by just a small amount. I'm talking a tiny pinch, just like that. That will make such a difference to this dish and give it a little je ne sais quoi, as we say in French. All right, these go onto the barbecue. I've been preheating my barbecue and I'm pretty much going to cook these for one to two minutes or until we get those beautiful char marks on the flesh side. Now that's a good sound on a barbecue. These smell like toffee now, so I think they're going to be ready. Let's have a look. Turn one over. Oh, look at that. That's exactly how it should be. I'm going to place these on a plate. And the second one, just be careful, it's very hot. And then just place them next to each other, leaning over. Let's have a look at the labneh. Now, this is one I've done a little bit earlier. You want to leave it in the fridge for a good couple of hours, even better, overnight, because this is the result. It's going to almost resemble buffalo mozzarella. Look how firm it is. You can almost break it off with your fingers. It's so creamy and so thick. I'm going to get a nice big spoonful of it. And then for some extra sweetness, I love the honey component of this. Just a drizzle over the mangoes and that labneh. The combination of the sweet mango, that little heat and warmth from the chilli, honey, and then the tartness of that gorgeous labneh. That is the simplest, most delicious dessert you could possibly have on a gorgeous beach just like this. And after a cook up on the gorgeous Whitehaven beach, I was in need of a little pick me up and Airlie Beach's world famous rum bar was just what the doctor ordered. Mark, lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I heard here at Ellie Beach they call you Dr. Rum. Yes. Where do you get that name from? <laughs> I kind of accumulated after many years of obsessively collecting rum. I mean, look at this wall. This is an impressive collection of rum. How many bottles of rum do you have here? <laughs> Currently, uh, on display, we've got 572 different types. What? I don't even have that many friends. <laughs> no. <laughs> I do. They come in glass bottles. <laughs> What's the difference between a dark rum and a white rum? I'm always very confused about it. A decent dark rum will get its uh, colour from mm -hmm. the barrel. 
And a popular misconception is that a white rum hasn't spent any time in a barrel. Well, that's what I thought. Yeah. What they do, decent white rum, spends a little bit of time in the barrel, and then they filter it through charcoal to take the colour out. Right, OK. And obviously the flavour is going to be different. This one's going to be much deeper. Yeah. Uh, woodier, earthier exactly. than this one. Yeah. So this one's a lot more versatile for cocktails. Okay. This is something that you might just sit by the fire or, mm. you know, just enjoy with a cigar or... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Mark, tell me a little bit about your love affair with rum. Where did that come from? Well, growing up in the Caribbean community in, in, in London, everyone's very passionate about their rum. Yeah. And then I just, I got fascinated by it and just wanted to, to keep learning and and keep sampling and uh, just immerse myself in the incredible diverse world that rum brings. Could you make me a little cocktail? I want to see what, yeah, what the Dr Rum shakes yeah. up. <laughs> well, you can't talk about rum without talking about the classic daiquiri. Okay. Um, and the classic daiquiri yep. was invented in Cuba mm -hmm. and it was refined by the El Floridita bar. Mm -hmm. The head bartender there, he um, pretty much refined this recipe, which is a little bit of caster sugar, freshly squeezed lime Ooh, juice. I'm loving this already. <laughs> These are the flavours that I just love together. Sugar, lime. Yeah, should be nicely balanced. In fact, one of the things that he came up with, a little saying to keep his bartenders in check, was that it um, should always be lime and never lemon. Mm -hmm. And a too sweet daiquiri is like a beautiful woman wearing too much perfume. Really? So it should never go over the top with sugar. <laughs> The old Cuban shake. <laughs> oh, I love that sound. It means your drink's nearly ready. <laughs> Good colour, isn't it? Yeah. You happy with that? Absolutely. So theatrical cocktail making, isn't it? It is. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moment of truth. You know what, Doctor? That is quite impressive. And it's not overpowering. It's perfectly balanced. Thank you very much. Mm. I'm here in Burley Heads on the gorgeous beach. It's a stunning day. And have a look at that horizon. You can see surface paradise, the skyline over there. It looks fantastic. I thought I'd cook you a really delicious dish showing off beautiful seafood that comes from this area on the Gold Coast. These are Balmain bugs and I got them straight off the trawlers this morning. They don't get any fresher than this. They've cooked them on the boat in salted water. I'm going to show you this delicious, very classic pasta dish. So I've just been preheating a pan, so a nice big pan. And into the pan I want to put really classic flavours, two cloves of garlic that I'm going to finely slice. And because this seafood is so spectacular, I don't want to overwork it. I want it to be the hero and I want everything else just to carry around it. So in with the garlic, along with a really good glug of oil because this is an olive oil based sauce. Use a really good quality olive oil because you are using quite a lot of it. So lucky there's a little bit of wind so it's controlling the heat here. It's just on a medium heat. While that's sizzling away, I'll get onto the chilli, which I'm going to finely slice again. If you are worried about the heat, you can take the seeds out. All right, in with our chilies. Give that a quick little toss. Already that smells fantastic. I'm going to add some capers now. These are just baby capers. Now we can get onto our tomatoes. Now I'm using two varieties of tomatoes, gorgeous ripe tomatoes, and I'll use three or four of them. We'll cut them into quarters and we can add them at this stage too so they blister up and they become really, really sweet. Now before I deglaze this with some white wine, I want to add some parsley. I'm not only going to use the leaves just at the last minute, but I also want to use the stalks. So much flavour in the stalks, it's got a really intense parsley flavour, but you do need to chop it up finely and get a little bit of heat through it. So just finely chopping it and then again that can go in. Now this is a fast pasta, so you can see that the tomatoes are slightly collapsing, but they're still holding their shape, and that's what I'm looking for. I love to add a little knob of butter now, some white wine, I'm using a Chardonnay, and then bring that to the boil. Allow it to reduce a little bit. I'll add a few tablespoons of our crushed tomato. 
get some pasta on. I'm gonna use spaghetti today, and then we can bring this whole dish together. So we can see how much this sauce has reduced. So I'm going to add all those beautiful juices from the Balmain Bugs now. So we're gonna get that delicious crustacean flavor just by adding those juices, so nothing's wasted. Now I'm gonna have a taste of this, see how the seasoning is. Oh, that is delicious. Now I've cooked my pasta. I'm just gonna prepare these gorgeous little tails. Just for presentation wise, I'm just gonna trim the top of them. All these trimmings can just be finely chopped and then it can go straight into the sauce. Now for some extra flavorings, that parsley, I still wanna use it for this, so scrunch it up. So for the parsley leaves, finely chop it. A nice big handful. And for a little zing, some lemon zest. The lemon zest you wanna leave at the last minute. And the reason you wanna do that is so you can taste it throughout the dish. If I added this at the beginning, you wouldn't taste it. It would just get lost with all the other flavorings in there. And just to round up all the flavors, the French in me, can't help myself, a little bit more butter, one knob of butter. And now we can add the pasta. So I'm just gonna bring this over here and then add the pasta that's al dente. You know, sometimes if the packet says to cook the pasta for eight minutes, cook it for about seven minutes because by the time you put it in that hot sauce, it'll continue cooking. And if a little bit of the water goes in there, that's completely fine. That's gonna give it some lovely flavor. Toss this to coat each strand of spaghetti in the sauce. And by shaking it, we're almost making a thicker sauce with the starch from the pasta. All right, let's plate this up. I'll make a little nest. And we'll just put that in the center of a bowl. And then for the hero of this, these gorgeous Balmain bugs, I'm lucky enough to have four or five. So I'm just gonna nestle them on the top. A little drizzle of olive oil and some fresh parsley. And we'll just pop that over the top. For this pasta, no parmesan required. I wanna taste the ocean, I wanna taste the Balmain bugs. Enough talking, I'm gonna get into that Balmain bug. You know, I do love lobster, but Balmain bugs have that sweet, delicate flavor. And the meat, it's so soft, it's not crunchy. Love it.